So picking up off of the last video, uh, the first video in this series, we downloaded Blender and now we have it open. We are using version 2.82a, which is the latest version. You're going to be set, hit with a few quick setups here. Uh, shortcuts, you can leave this exactly how it is. Just keep it as Blender. We don't need to change anything here. These are just shortcuts that you can use on your keyboard. Uh, nothing too uh, extravagant here. We're going to learn some shortcuts as we progress. Uh, next, we're going to select with left because that's what most people will do. But if you prefer right, just select right and then you'll be making selections with your right button rather than your left. I'm going to stick with uh, left. And then spacebar, this is when you hit spacebar, you get different options here. You can have play, which if you're doing an animation, will play your animation, or tools, or search. I'm going to st stick with tools because I feel, um, at least in my personal opinion, we're going to be using tools a lot more than playing animations, at least for the time being. Next, go ahead and select your theme. I'm going to stick with dark. And let's go next, and then we're, we're hit with a bunch of different options here. And don't be overwhelmed if you're new to 3D or anything, or... Um, or say uh, any other application out there, you always get hit with like a getting started guide. That's all this is. Uh, we have new files here that we can make. Uh, we don't need to worry about those for the time being. You can read the release notes on Blender. Um, you can donate if you want. Uh, this is These videos are no way uh, in relation to Blender. Uh, then you have a manual, which uh, if you want to look through as a parent, that is perfectly fine. I recommend it. There's a Blender website and then the credits. We don't have to worry about any of this though. Let's just go ahead and click in here and then we're greeted with our default scene. So if you have a middle mouse button, a scroll wheel, and a button mixed, go ahead and click that down and rotate. This will rotate around your scene like this. Right click will bring up a object context menu, which we'll get into a little later. And left click and drag will be your selection. That's Those are the options we chose when we first opened up Blender. So that is good. Now here you're left with a default cube. and um, Blender always comes standard with, unless you set it otherwise, but at least when you first open it before you do anything else, uh, it comes with a camera, a cube, and a light. These are your main three components in any 3D scene. If you want to have something to look through, we have our main viewport, which is here. And we this isn't really considered a camera, but it is a viewport perspective camera. Doesn't really do much of anything, which is why we want to have an individual camera. Now this camera can be seen as anything from uh, your basic, you know, point and shoot camera to a DSLR to a movie camera. It just really depends on how you set it up uh, or how you want to visualize it. But if you want to record anything, you need to have a camera. So we set a camera up in our scene, which we will then use for uh, doing our main renders. A cube is just a basic 3D geometry. Um, we don't need this for any specific thing. It's just there by default for viewing re references. We can replace that with anything we want. But for now, we're going to stick with the cube. And then we have a light. If you want to set up anything inside of a 3D program and have a good visual appeal, you need to have good lighting. This is only one light. Some scenes might have one light. They might have one omnidirectional light, which can be considered like the sun, uh, or it could have anything anywhere between one and a thousand lights. Just really depends on your scene. Most of the time, people are going to stick with uh, maybe three to four, maybe five lights as standard, and then add as they need. So, we have our three basic scene setup objects here. Um, they put them under a collection. A collection is just a group and we can move these out of a group or into a group if we want. Every object has its own properties, which you can go through here. Don't uh, look at these and then get, um, you know, jostled. Uh, it can be kind of overwhelming at first, but really all this is is the location, rotation, and scale of this object you have selected. And it's on an X, Y, and Z axis. So you have your X, your Y, and then your Z is depth. And it's really hard to translate while recording a screen, but if X and Y is up, down, left, and right, Z would be the space beyond the up, down, left, and right. It'll give you the depth, and that's what Z is. Or a lot of other professionals say Z. I say Z because I'm in America. So, And then uh, these all translate to all these different objects. As you can see here, we have location, rotation, and scale. 
and they all have these similar transform mechanisms. They all have their different uh, mechanisms in relations, collections, all that stuff, and settings, because a camera is not going to have the same settings as a cube, and a cube is not going to have the same settings as a light. So we go to our light object, and from here we can look through all these different options here to kind of change our lighting. In this case, we're going to go to our light here, uh, object data properties for our light, and that'll change with the cube, and that'll also change with the camera. We just have our object properties right here. Let's go to our light, and that's our light right there. And from here, we can change a few things. We can change the power by clicking and dragging in here. The higher the wattage is what this is um, uh, measured in the brighter and hard the light will be, and the lower, the softer, and uh, the less bright the, s the light would be. You can also click in there and type if you wanted to, which is sometimes easier. And we'll get into specular a little bit later. later. Uh, essentially, this is going to be the, the specularity amount that this light will cast. Um, and then we have the radius, which is how far the light will shine given any a radius around the light. A radius is just this circle. As it increases, the circle gets wider, and as it decreases, it gets smaller. And right now our light is currently set to a point light, so the light is just going to be an omnidirectional point light source, so you can think of this as a your standard light bulb. Then we have a sun, and the sun's going to have its own different values. You can think of the sun light as our sun. You have the strength, which is again just the strength, the brightness, and uh, how bright and how dark the sun would be. But you also have an angle, and this angle will change depending on where you want the sun located. And the angle is right here. You can see the angle being depicted by this line, which you can click and drag if you want. And if, actually, if you hover over any of these what we call gizmos, it'll tell you what it is interactively point cameras and lights to a location. All right. So we have our angles. We have our, again, specular and our strength. Then a spotlight. A spotlight, you can think of like a theater light. If you want something highlighted very bright with a dark shadow um, around the edges and it gets darker as it goes out, that would be our spotlight. And again, the radius will decrease and increase depending on what we need. We have a custom distance we can, we can get into a little bit later. Then you have the size, and this will be the size of the cone. So if you increase the size of this cone, you have more light being spread out over the object over a wider um, area. If you want to condense it and really focus on something, then you decrease the size. The blending here... <coughs> We can show the cone as well to kind of make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on. This is kind of like a lower representation of our uh, light source. So everything inside this cone will be highlighted or be lit, and everything outside of it will not be lit. And then you have this blend. And this blend, if you look at this cone or this uh, circle at the bottom, we have an outer radius and an in inner radius. When we increase the blend, the inner radius will increase. This blend will make the light softer around the edges instead of hard. And then if we decrease it, now we have a really hard light that's hitting directly in this inner radius right here. So everything inside of this cone right here will be lit really harshly with little fall off, is what we would normally call it. In Blender, they call it blend. So we're going to add just a bit of fall off there. And then we have an area light. An area light can be seen as like a big square or rectangle that emits a light, and that's used for different purposes, uh, different, uh, uh, different workflows, and we'll get into that maybe a little later. For now, let's stick with a spotlight, and let's go ahead and move our cube. So there is a way to move uh, our cube without using the... Uh, let's go back to... where is it at? I'm still relatively quite new to uh, Blender because I use Cinema 4D a lot. It's going to be under this tab right here, the Object Properties right here. So don't mistake that for 
the um, object data properties, which is what changes the actual cube itself. We want the object properties, which tells us where it's at in our scene. So instead of using the transform like this, uh, whoops, went way too far, <laughs> can be quite sensitive. Instead of doing it this way, which does work and has its purpose, we uh, will actually use the shortcut keys. <clears throat> and to better show that to you, I will go ahead and uh, pull them up for you. So to better understand the shortcut keys, some of them are fairly common and familiar among the in industry. However, in Blender, to transform or to move our object in our 3D space, you would hit G. You'll get this little arrow uh, gizmo or icon that we're using for our pointer now, and you can see how we're moving that in our 3D space, in our 3D scene. And if we were to rotate around by middle mouse button and rotate and moving our mouse, hitting G again, we can now move this into the spotlight and making sure that it is in the light at all angles. There we go. Now if we wanted to rotate this, we would just use R. And that will free rotate. And if you do it on, if you hit R again, you can change the axis. So we have this one, which kind of more freely rotates it in 360 degrees. This one just kind of does it in, uh, in a slightly different manner. So let's go ahead and do this for now. And there we go, we got our cube in our spotlight. And we have our camera, which we need to move and set up. Now there's another way to go about moving our objects. And that will be by using these icons over here. So right now we're using this, which is our select box. If we select our camera and then use this tool, which is the move tool, we get this awesome little gizmo that comes up with the blue, green, and red arrows. This will move it on the Z axis, which is the blue. The green will move it on the Y. And the red will move it on the X. So if we want to move this camera so it's looking at our cube from this angle, we need to move it on the X axis and the Y axis, as well as the Z. But first we're going to move it on the X axis. So we're going to move it to about maybe right here. There we go. So now it's more in front of our cube. And we're going to move it down, so or up, sorry, up so it's above our cube, and it's going to be looking down at our cube. Now we need to rotate the camera, and we can do that with the R key, or we can use it with this icon right here, which is the rotate. And now we can easily rotate it on this axis, which is the Z axis for the rotation tool, to rotate it so it looks towards our little cube, and then down at our cube by using the green one, which is our Y. If I do it at that angle though, it's gonna rotate it on all the axes, so I gotta make sure I have it highlighted there. And there we go. So it's kind of wonky, so we got to kind of fix it up a bit. If we click inside of the trackball, which is what this is called, we can rotate it in every direction. So the arrow points which way the camera is up, this white arrow. So we know which way is up for the camera. And let's go ahead and put it right probably there. Oh, wrong way got to be turned around. Sometimes it can be really funky. There we go. Other way. There we go. Alright, now let's just move it down. So it's looking at our cube. There we go. There is a way to make sure you can see what you're pointing at inside of um, your camera. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. To easily do this, we can use the shortcut key, which is Control-0 on the numpad on your 10 key, and that will give you the perspective of the camera. From here, you can move around again, but you're going to lose the perspective of the camera. So if you need to go back to it, just go ahead and hit Control-0. Uh, control and it'll take you back. 
Now with the camera selected and our move tool here, we should be able to select uh, our camera again and we should be able to move it around so it's more in line with our cube now that we've been able to compose our scene a bit through our camera. There we go, looks like we need to go down just a little bit more so let's go ahead and select our camera use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out of your scene move it over just a tad bit and then down and let's go ahead and look at it again there we go now from here we have our light cube and camera set up now all we need to do is add a floor so let's go ahead and add a floor real quick to do that we will go to add mesh plane you can see our plane was added there and now we need to increase the scale of the plane so it encompasses our scene and is below our cube. So let's go ahead and since the move tool is already being used here, let's go ahead and move the plane below the cube a little bit. And then let's go to our scale or you can use S on the keyboard which will let you free scale it which is quite easy as well. But if you want to use the scale tool here you use these gizmos which will let you stretch it in different axes longer or shorter depending on what you need which is nice if you want to scale it in two directions at once you have this red uh, scale here and this green scale here and that'll should scale it in two different axes or you just click anywhere inside of the the circle here I guess in this case usually in most 3d applications you would grab a different icon like this but in this case we don't have to we just select everything inside of that circle so we made our cube or we made our plane so let's go ahead and move it into the scene scale it up a little bit more I'm just gonna use the S key to do that so now our plane is within our camera shot and this is our camera shot right here so now everything's encompassed so at this point we have a very basic scene set up we can go ahead and start rendering so we go to rendering and uh, we can set up our render tool so uh, blender comes with a few what you can just stick with is uh, you can start with EV if you have a GPU or cycles workbench is going to be what you can use uh, not workbench sorry cycles uh, will be what you probably want to use if you don't have a GPU because you can use your CPU I'm going to go ahead and use a GPU compute in 3D terms. GPU compute will render out typically faster than the CPU. There are some limitations, but typically it will uh, it'll compute faster. So let's just go ahead and stick with that. Samplings, we'll talk about these a little bit later, but keep it on path tracing unless you're using a CPU. Uh, you can still use uh, path tracing uh, I guess inside of Blender sometimes they don't have those options in other applications and then we're gonna go ahead and just stick with these and then render it out and to render it out all you have to do is go to render and render image and then it's gonna go through a bucket phase and this is these are buckets they fill up with this the data made from the scene and as the buckets fill up you your image is created and this can take some time especially at higher resolutions or given different quality settings but now you can see the fruits of your labor our our uh, plane here is a little bit outside of the camera view but you have this soft light and we have these shadows coming from the light that the box or that the cube is creating and we have our plane and it's really dull and boring right now and I know that's not very fun but we'll we'll get into texturing uh, our scenes a little bit later but now it's just really important to understand how you can move around inside of the layout and there you can see our plane is being cut off let's go ahead and move that around a little bit more and we can actually start changing the lights and this is this is fun because setting up lights uh, is really important and, and it, it makes or breaks a scene and if you have very boring lighting uh, then you have a very boring scene but playing with the lights is really fun you, you can get a whole I, I can spend hours just playing with the lights so we have this large blend you can see how soft our render was so if we go back to uh, rendering we have our scene here you can see how soft the lighting is if we want stronger more harsh light we can go ahead and decrease that 
and then let's go ahead and render that out and see how that looks. Now we have a much more hard light on the edge here rather than how soft it was. We still have soft shadows here, but for the most part we have a harder light. So let's go ahead and change this to a sun and we'll see how this affects our scene. We'll do it at a 65 degree angle and let's decrease the bounces. This, this right here, if we decrease this, will make our lighting not as realistic, probably a little bit more fake looking, but for the most part we'll increase our render or decrease our render times. We're going to keep the strength at a thousand. Let's see what that looks like. In this case, our strength at a thousand is creating an entirely washed out scene except for our shadow right there. <laughs> so this is why we, we do test renders, usually smaller render areas rather than entire images. So let's go ahead and decrease the strength and instead of just clicking and dragging, we'll just click in here and then type something in. So let's do something like 500. So we're going to do half of what we had before. And let's render that out. And it looks like we're still getting quite a bit of light. And that could just be because we don't have the sunlight set up exactly how we should. But that's fine. We can, you can see how um, changing the, the lights to different things affects our scene. Other than that, that is the basic of, basics of setting up our first 3D scene with just a cube and a plane and a light and a camera. So uh, that'll conclude this lesson, and I apologize if I'm not the best teacher, but I do try to explain things in uh, sim simple terms. I've made numerous YouTube videos, and uh, I like to think that I'm helping someone. So if you found this useful or if you want to know more or learn more, please uh, let me know, and I'll keep pumping them out regardless because I just find it to be fun. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.